So coming up in episode three, the pass theory. You want to pass this unit? Make sure you know about the pass theory. Uh, then we'll have a quick chat about Gardner's multiple theories of intelligence. At last, I get to categorize myself as clever, even though I ain't good with words and I ain't good with numbers. And finally, we will look at Sternberg's theory of intelligence. The boy is getting complicated again. So, ready for a few more theories of intelligence? Well, there's Naglieri and Das. Whereas previous theories were focused on abilities, Naglieri and Das focused on processes, and they came up with a cognitive assessment scheme. And they put forward this scheme as an alternative to the existing IQ tests. Their system is based on information processing framework. And their work began in the 1970s when cognitive psychology shifted the focus from what people do to how people think. And psychology started to model itself on incoming technology, computers. The human mind started to become viewed as an information processing unit. You know, kind of like a computer. And in information processing, they hypothesized that the key processes are planning, attention, simultaneous processing, and successive processing. The acronym to that is PASS. Clever, hey? Well, what are these things? Planning is all about selection, usage, and monitoring of solutions. It requires impulse control. It's the last stage of processing, and it is associated, so the theory goes, with the frontal lobes of the brain. Now, tension, that's selectively attending to and ignoring stimuli, and that's having vigilance over time. This is the first stage of processing, and it's associated with the brainstem and the midline subcortical structures. Forgotten where they are? Me too. Have a look at the brain. Not your own, but you find a picture of someone else's and see if you can find where these things are. It's not that important uh, for this unit anyway. Anyway, carry on. Carrying on. Simultaneous processing is all about simultaneous mental operations, particularly spatial analysis. And successive processing are the activities requiring sequential operations. So it's repeating digits and word strings. Now notice how the language of localizing in the brain comes in here. There's a definite biological feel to all this stuff. And in this theory, the biological component sits in the architectural system. This is where our memory span and speed of con cognition are things that this theory says are unaffected by the environment. So this is the equivalent of computer hardware. This is where the planning and attention is seen to occur. The second component is the executive system, where we think. And this is the equivalent of computer software, if you like. Now, this next one, next theory, is our penultimate theory. Just one more to go after this, in this presentation anyway. Here we have Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence. This stuff has become really popular, and it's percolated into the public's consciousness. Not everyone knows about this stuff, but more people than you would, than you would imagine know about this stuff. It has become seen as the antidote for the myopic, short-sighted theories of intelligence from the past. Those theories that relied on cognitive processes, but little else. This work came from research that showed that some psychological uh, faculties were spared after brain damage and brain injury. And also how some people who appeared to have low intelligence had some exceptional talents. You know, the savant phenomena. Rain man, that sort of thing. And also a range of evidence, um, other evidence, sits behind this theory of multiple intelligences. Now you can read all about it in our prescribed textbook. So let's, li let's list those multiple intelligences. Here they are. Linguistic intelligence, that's kind of being word smart. Logistical mathematical intelligence, well that's number and reasoning smart. And spatial intelligence, 
you can kind of think of that as picture smart and bodily kinesthetic intelligence. That's body smart. And finally, musical intelligence, you know, music smart. Oh, not finally, there's also interpersonal intelligence. Surprising I forgot about that, talking into a camera. Anyway, interpersonal intelligence, so that's kind of like people smart. Oh, no, there's another one. Why don't I remember these things? Because there's too many of them, that's why. Uh, the, the next one is intrapersonal intelligence. That's kind of what you could think of as self-smart. <laughs> and here's another one. This list goes on forever. Naturalist intelligence. That's not being smart when you're naked. No, that's uh, being kind of nature smart. Now, linguistic Logical and spatial intelligences have been very well established and there are now many formal tests around these to assess them. This is less so for the other forms of intelligence. Now here's another little poster for you, this on just uh, setting out those different forms of intelligence in a sort of infographic. I'll post this up on our Moodle site. I think it's one of the more accessible ways of presenting these multiple intelligences because as you'll notice, when you have multiple factors, it starts looking complicated and certainly hard to remember. Now, Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences has become, as I said, widely known and quite popular with the public, and it's received strong support from empirical studies. It's also helped to explain the savant phenomena. And here is a little YouTube link to a documentary on Kim Peek. The documentary is called the real Rain Man. The quality of the video is not great, but it's uh, it's an interesting story. Now, I won't play it in this video now, but have a look at it if you're interested. And now to our final theory of intelligence for this episode. This is Sternberg's triachic theory of successful intelligence. Again, it broadened out the notion of what intelligence is so as to incorporate the idea of adaptation in intelligence. Triarchic just means ruled by free. You know, we've got a thing about free things. Sorry, Hitler had a free thing about free things. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sidetrack. Why did I talk about Hitler now? Oh, he did, he did come up on an earlier episode, didn't he? Holocaust and everything. But things come in threes. Do you know when, um, oh, I'm getting, oh, I'm so sorry about this. I'm on a complete tangent here. There's this thing that politicians use. They borrowed it from Hitler, actually, which is you present things in three. You go, dum, dum, dum. It's supposed to register in the memory and uh, it's supposed to be more dramatic, more memorable and so on. Anyway, let's get back to the three things that I was originally talking about. I should stick to my script. The three things in Sternberg's uh, theory are componential intelligence, also known as analytical intelligence, experiential intelligence, also known as creative intelligence, and contextual intelligence, also known as practical intelligence. And I'm just going to show you two cute cartoon characters with extremely boring monotone voices to get across the basics of this theory. So I had a few questions about the whole multiple intelligences thing. Oh yeah. I did not even know you were really listening. What would you like to know? Well I learned that most psychologists agree that there is some kind of general intelligence. Right? Right. And many psychologists are also working to figure out the specific intelligences and how many different kinds there are. Okay so can you tell me some of these different kinds of intelligences? Well, one theory is the triarchic or three-part theory of intelligence that proposes that people may display more or less analytical intelligence, creative intelligence, and practical intelligence. Who came up with that? A psychologist named Robert Sternberg. He said that intelligence tests only measure the first kind, analytical intelligence which is the ability to answer problems with a single right answer but that they do not well assess creativity, which is the ability to adapt to new situations and create new ideas, or practicality, or the ability to write good memos or to effectively delegate responsibility. So there are three kinds of intelligences? Yes. The analytical is the one that makes someone able to recall facts and answer things correctly. It is what is measured by all those tests that the psychologists give us. Okay. And the other two? 
Creative intelligence is the ability to adapt to new situations and to create new solutions to problems. Creativity has been found to be dependent upon several factors. Expertise. Imaginative thinking. Risk-taking. Intrinsic interest. And working in a creative environment. Creativity is in part a social phenomenon. The most creative people have been supported, aided, and challenged by other people working on similar projects. And what about the third intelligence? The one with writing good memos and delegating responsibility? That is practical intelligence. It is more than just good secretary skills. It is a kind of intelligence that cannot be learned from books and lectures. It is what is commonly referred to as street smarts or common sense. So like all kinds of gangster smarts and the things people pick up from living in bad neighborhoods. Right? Well, yes. But it can be a lot more than that, too. It is an intelligence that is learned from life experiences. Okay, I think I understand that. But was he right? Well, in some aspects, psychology has proven his theories. Scientists mostly agree that creative intelligence is not closely linked to analytical intelligence. And practical intelligence is separate from both of them. What is that supposed to mean? He was kind of right? Come on. You got me into this whole psychology isn't evil thing, but basing a science off of being partly right all the time seems a little bit suspicious if you ask me. Fair enough. But tell me one thing. Can you exactly measure how a person thinks? Well, no. And can you tell me the exact process that makes you able to remember things and respond to the tests that the psychologists put you through? Well, no. Then the best we can ask for is being kind of right. Is that still suspicious? Yup. Now, this is getting so broad and all-encompassing. My poor little head can't get around it. I don't know about yours. Maybe yours can. Um, what I want to do now is just to present you a couple of slides for you to have a look through. You can download these from the PowerPoint that will sit just under the, this uh, video on our Moodle site. I'm just going to show you these slides with some gentle, calming music to help you look through this theory it's because it's getting complicated again you know these theories get complicated anyway um yeah let's play the music and calm your way through sternberg's theory So that's all for now, folks, and coming up in episode four, our first proper look at intelligence tests, and it will help us figure out what type of moron are we. And we'll also, not we'll also, we will look at Welshler, Stanford Binet, the Detroit and the Cognitive Assessment System and Kaufman's. All of those are tests, by the way. Anyway, we'll talk about that in the next episode. So I shall... 
See you then or see you in class. Ta-da!